Hello, young ones. We are here to tell you about the War of Independence. Yo ho ho, it is time for a timeline. The War of Independence began with the Solo Headbag ambush on the 21st of January 1919. On the 5th of April 1920, IRA prisoners began hunger strike. On the 7th of June 1921, James Craig was made the first PM of Northern Ireland. On the 6th of December 1921, the Anglo-Irish Treaty was signed, ending the War of Independence. Today I will be teaching you about Pierce Beasley. He was an Irish author, playwright, biographer and translator who was a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood and fought in the Easter Rising and served as a member of Dáil Éireann. He was a founder of the Irish Volunteers in 1913. By the time of the Easter Rising that year, Beasley was Deputy Commanding Officer of the 1st Dublin Battalion. Following the signing of the Anglo-Irish Treaty, Beasley was re-elected there unopposed at the 1922 election as a pro-treaty Sinn Féin candidate. His works revolved around the Irish language movement and the IRA. These works focused on the independent struggle of Ireland. He wrote about these topics in newspapers such as The Standard and The Carrier Beasley died unmarried, aged 84, on the 22nd of June, 1965. I'm teaching you about people that were killed in the War of Independence. I will be talking about Michael Griffin. He was an Irish Catholic priest born in the town of Gertine, County Galway. He had been associated with the Irish National Land League, along with the political movement of its founder, Charles Stuart Parnell, and he was imprisoned for his activities in the 1880s. Griffin was ordained at St. Patrick's College, Maynooth, in 1917. Griffin was most likely murdered by the Auxiliary Division of the Royal Irish Constabulary due to his known Republican sympathies. He would have been a target for reprisal killings by British paramilitaries who had already committed several murders in Galway in the preceding months. On the 22nd of November, after Griffin's funeral mass at St. Joseph's Church, the funeral cortege pro processed through the streets of Galway, three bishops, 150 priests, and in excess of 12,000 mourners participated. The priest was buried in the grounds of Lockery Cathedral. Hello, I will teach you about spies. Colonel Thomas Gay was at the centre of an intelligence ring working on behalf of Michael Collins during the War of Independence. Gay worked with Colonel Ned Broy and Detective Joe Kavna, both of whom were employed in the castle to get intelligence information to Collins. According to Broy, the main liaison of, with Collins was supplied by Tommy Gay personally. Broy would meet Gay at the back of the Tivoli Theatre or at Webb's bookshop on the Keys to pass on information. Gay's position as librarian at Chapel Street Library in Dublin during this period made him regularly accessible when required. He was an active trade unionist joining the Irish Local Government Officers Trade Union. He served on the Executive Committee and was ultimately elected President in 1928, he helped establish the Library Association of Ireland. He was elected to the first executive board and held the position of chairman for three years. In his later career, he worked as private secretary to the city manager. He 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 he. Here I am. I'm back to tell you about the Lieutenant Colonel Hugh Montgomery. In 1920, Montgomery was seconded to the British Army Intelligence Corps in Dublin. During the Irish War of Independence, he was part of the Cairo Gang, a group of British spy masters whose deaths were ordered by Michael Collins as part of Bloody Sunday. On the 21st of November 1920, Collins' 12 apostles entered Montgomery's lodgings at 28 Pembroke Street and shot him. Montgomery died of his wounds almost three weeks later. He was buried with full military honours at Brompton Cemetery. That was the end of today's video. So, pals and buddies, this is the end. We are sorry, but this is the end. Ho, ho.